Hello, welcome to AEF TV. I'm joined now by Kelly Kyo from Montigny. And uh, firstly, Kelly, welcome. Thank, Thank thanks, you. Uh, thanks for being here. Pleasure. And, and just to tee this interview up, I, um, four years ago I started covering AEF. I was talking about renewables and people were saying, well, it's never going to be grid scale based load, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and look at where we are now. Yes. And uh, uh, one of the things I've been probing for since uh, we were doing the uh, interviews in Dubai last year and so on is, okay, wh you know, where is the biomass element uh, 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 in this whole thing? The, the, there's a lot of agriculture farming. Where, where is that sort of circular economy type uh, thing? And it's great for me to have had an interview yesterday where actually it was a biomass project. So it's great for me to have you in here, but I'm not going to talk Pleasure. anymore. Tell us a little bit <laughs> about what you're doing. Yes, yeah, so Montigny, we're a sustainable forestry company. Our core business is operating our sawmills in Swaziland. Um, we're also expanding into Mozambique and South Africa. But our reason for being here is we're putting up our first biomass power plant this year, or hopefully in the next couple of years, we're starting to raise money this year for it. Um, looking at about 35 megawatts, which makes up 30% of Swazi's electricity today. Um, so quite big, and we as a country import almost all of our energy from South Africa. So, so this is your core business, which is forestry and timber. Yeah. Uh, you're looking at that, you're like going, hang on a minute, this is what we're doing. Yes. And it is energy intensive in its own right. You've got to saw this stuff yes. up and, yes, uh, and so on. So, so what I'm trying to get to is what was the thought process the that thought, leads you yeah. to we're gonna getting into this whole new uh, yeah, space? Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's really in our company ethos. So when we look at the forest, we look to use every part of the tree for its maximum value. And we looked at the way we were using biomass today, and we weren't maximizing the value. And also, we looked at the communities that we live in that surround our forest. We have 55,000 hectares of plantation, and a lot of that surrounds very, very rural, poor communities. And we thought, okay, look, at, there's people that need jobs. We're not maximizing the biomass. We can employ people to gather the biomass that we need. Swaziland needs electricity. This is the way to optimize the resource, the human capital that we have, and create a brilliant new industry in Swaziland that's really not tapped into today. Um, and luckily, the regulatory environment is moving in this direction. The government... So are you still waiting for some final regulatory thing to thing, uh, you know, uh, yeah. uh, uh, implementation to happen for you to be fully to be able to do this because you're looking actually, at two-year event horizon is that partially because of the regulatory framework or so we're really lucky with the timing of the regulatory framework as well in the past year Swazin's renewed or come up with really structured our renewable energy and IPP policies so it's great timing that's going through Parliament as we speak right now, while we're in the process of raising funds and coming up with a way to structure the project properly. Um, but no, so the regulatory environment should be should be primed and ready. It's really for us just finding the right development partner and the right funders and, um, and getting the tariff right as well. Right. Yep. And so development partner, funder, uh, and so on, but, but uh, can you just explain a little bit more about the current thinking? I accept that it may change about the technology, the, 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 I would imagine the waste product you're using and yeah. what are you going to turn it into? Is it, is it, uh, is it clean burning to electricity? Is it biogas? Yes. What, what is it? Or is it all of the above? What, no, what are you trying to really do? Really good question. So there's a couple different streams of feedstock that come through. Um, one is from our sawmills. We have a handful of sawmills on site. So the wood chips are already there today and they we sell them a lot to the sugar mills but we can use them on site then to create the power right there sawmill to power plant just right there um, also our forestry operations today when we harvest um, there's a certain percentage of the biomass that's just left in the field and burned that's not great for the environment um, there's it's not great for fire risk our number one concern as a forestry company so we'd also bring in scavengers to gather that the third feedstock stream that's really, really close to our heart too is um, Swaziland has a massive issue, as does South Africa, with invasive wattle trees. So they're indigenous to Australia, invasive in southern Africa. 
Um, so it's a bit like in the UK we have with Japanese knotweed and stuff like that. It's same there. Same thing. No, no predatory environment yes. and it's going crazy. It's going crazy. It causes massive land disputes. Chiefs are constantly arguing, well, this wattle tree, my grandpa planted it, but now it's spread onto your land. Who owns it? Mm. Um, but the problem with wattle, the benefit, the blessing and the curse with it is it's extremely lucrative. Japan creates their highest quality paper from Swaziland and South Africa's wattle tree. So we sell it to them for a premium price. So there's a reason um, for the things being there. So there's a reason for the things being there. It won't be eradicated in Swaziland. There's also a sentimental value, as I mentioned. Grandpa planted it. I'm not going to just eradicate the species. And also they live off of it. It's subsistence forestry in a way. Um, but what they don't know is if they can take the jungle that's just spreading in random and that they just go in there today and just slash whatever they can and sell it to us actually and then we trade the timber through to Japan. If they properly had a bit of time and resources to organize the jungle into a plantation, they could triple their yields in about one to two years. So that's a bit of education. Yeah, so it's education. So we have a pilot program right now that we're really passionate about and it's going great on a small scale where we're just entering into the community and seeing um, it's quite complex how the land rights work and we're saying, you know, if this is your jungle, would you want the education to rehabilitate this into a plantation? It stops the spread. We will sign an agreement with you. We'll buy the timber. We'll give you a loan to rehabilitate it. Mm -hmm and then we'll give you a guaranteed buying market and we'll sell it through to Japan for the premium price. So they make great money off of it, but they could be making three times what they make today. And then our power plant could have more sustainable feedstock as but well. But isn't it a reasonably easy sell to go to someone and say, hey, I could show you a way to make three times the amount of money? It is, but there's a waiting period, as I said. And I think I misspoke, I said one to two years waiting. It can be up to five years to really right. optimize the forest. Um, so we need to also educate them on, okay, well, what do you do in the meantime? So we've also partnered with an NGO, TechnoServe, um, who's based in Swaziland, and they're helping come in and say, no, you know, there's all these different entrepreneurship value chains that you can tap into, mushrooms grow in the forest, or, you know, you can start up a handicraft business, or plant maize, or do this and that, that helps you boost your income while you wait for the trees to grow to maturity. Okay, so let, let's bring it back to the power generation because yeah. we, we kind of segued off to uh, 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 to this issue. Absolutely. We go back to the power generation. It's thirty percent of power. I would imagine it's has a baseload power characteristic as well. It does. So, 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 so that's useful. Brilliant. Yeah. But thirty percent is pretty significant, right? Significant. It, 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 it's a, a huge chunk of the uh, uh, of the country's. Uh, how sustainable is this? Because it, so my question is this: is that it, and it's always one of those things about biomass projects where you go, uh, hang on a minute. Okay, so you start; it's a byproduct; uh, it starts working, and then suddenly that becomes the business, and you know the uh, uh, the feedstock is now less and less grown for its original purpose, more and more grown for, for the electrification or, 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 or whatever it is. But yeah. How do you keep the balance? You know, I think for us, we're not looking to shift our core business into sustainable energy. There's a million people out there today that do that very, very well. So we're just looking to find the right partner who understands Swaziland. It's a very unique country. It's a kingdom. It's one of the last um, monarchies in the world. Um, so we're looking to find the right investor who understands it, understands the region and respects it and can be our partner for the long term, but we will always be a sustainable forestry company. We will always operate our sawmills as our core business um, and we're expanding that part of the business while we're looking for a partner to say, this will be on our land, it will use our feedstock, it will be in the country that we ultimately care about and will be with forever, um, but we're not looking to change our business model. So what are you looking for in a partner? Um, we're looking for an, the expert in the region, really, um, who Any understands... Any other credentials, like, uh, you know, they, they have to have a certain business ethos or, 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 or anything like that? Is Definitely, it? I would say. Um, our business ethos is, is, is really important. It's sustainable in every aspect. Um, and it's also, you know, an element of how we treat our people. Um, we treat our people very, very well, and we take that very seriously. Antigone, in Swaziland, you can't get away with anything. 
which is a, which is a wonderful thing. You, if you treat somebody the wrong way, you will see them tomorrow. It's a tiny country, 1.3 million people, and of that, we employ 7,000 of them. So, so it's yeah. quite big, and forestry is a long-term business. So our partner, we have to, it's probably the most important thing. We have to just have the same values and the same vision of how you treat people, sustainability in all aspects of the problem. Environmental, it has to be there. Um, employment is a priority for us. Um, the way that we harvest our trees, it's not mechanized at all. It's almost all manual, right. which is very bizarre in today's forestry. But actually, the way we've gone about it, um, we took over from a big South African conglomerate when we bought the forest just a couple years ago now, a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And they did it very mechanized. We do it very manual. Right. But we employ about three times as many people, and the environment's much happier. And the ethos behind that shift from mechanization to manual is to, I mean, show people the jobs and, yeah. you know, uh, uh, and Absolutely. You know, people kind of like to work, they like to be busy. So we uh, we're coming to. to the end of our time here. You've been at AEF. I, I don't know whether this is the first time you've been here or it not. It is. Yeah. So as a first time visitor, what have you found here? Has, has it been useful for you? It's been absolutely, absolutely brilliant for me. Um, actually, I just had a wonderful moment where I was in a talk. I came in a little bit late. I'd been in a previous meeting, sat down, and just as I sat the, down, the conversation shifted to two men sitting in front of me who happened to be Swaziland's utility representative and the regular regulator representative, and then me as an aspiring IPP representative sitting right behind them. And the moderator of the panel discussion turned it to them just as I sat down and we ended up having an engaging conversation and getting to share about Swaziland's situation with the whole room. So, Lovely, so you've made yes, connections brilliant. and it's yes. kind of radiant. Uh, radiant and we did uh, laugh that we had to come all the way because I hadn't met either of those individuals before to London to meet, but I guess that's what AEF's all about. Well, it brings people together, yeah. right? So, so that's yeah. the great thing. Uh, Kelly, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our time. Thank you, thank you very much for joining us, thank and you thank so you much. very much for watching as well. Cheers.